Evening folks, just checking to make sure everything's okay because the camera moved a little bit. Uh, evening, my name's Finn from Ethelmark. Uh, welcome to the Surfing Shack. Uh, this is going to be a class on the three basic shots. You have, terminology will change according to your region. Uh, hopefully by watching these shots, you will see what I'm talking about and, and understand it. What I call a flat snap, you might notice something else. What I call an offside, you might notice something else. Leg snap, you might notice something else. But to me, and how I was taught, the three basic shots that you need to learn well, because really everything else builds off those three shots. Everything is a building block. Uh, I'm sure wherever your teachers are, whoever your teachers are, most likely they have stressed that before that you build from the ground up, if your basics are solid, and everything else that adds on to your basics, you'll be a much better fighter. If your basics are weak, honestly, your opponents can very easily pick you apart for it. Especially if you're a trick shot artist. Say, okay, I know you can't throw this, I know you can't throw this, I know you can't throw this well. Okay, all you gotta worry about is this trick stuff. So, so yeah. So the three basic shots. You got your flat snap. Different people throw it differently. Uh, I I teach basically these like they're serving a flat. So your hands basically up in the air. What my goal is on whoever I'm fighting is since predominantly most of your uh, I don't know it's a lot different than when I first started. When I first I started in Atlanta, yeah, where basically it was here's your bassinet, here's your heater shield. Go forth and conquer. <laughs> so, so how I learned this, that's what worked the best. But basically, your object was that your sword was horizontal to their shield edge, their top shield edge. You made them block. Throwing this, you're throwing right into the shield. They don't have to do anything. Yeah, it feels great. You feel like you're chopping a tree. That's all you're doing. <laughs> and if they got a wooden shield, you're destroying their shield. Congratulations. Uh, so you want to concentrate on that shot going above the horizontal plane of their top of their shield. This works perfectly fine against round shields, whatever, because they still got a top. You want this to be over top. Uh, you can cheat more against round shields, oval shields, things like that, uh, kites, with, you know, round, round top kites, stuff like that. You can cheat a little more because that basically gets over their edge. So, according to who you fight, but if you always, but if you learn this, you can modify everything else to the shield that you're fighting. Uh, but this is the hard part to learn. This is easy. Uh, if you cannot do. Uh, if for some reason your either your arm armor, your elbow, whatever, does not allow you to do this. And there are guys I know who can't do this. Uh, I highly recommend uh, looking up Duke Logan, Duke Logan Evan Wolf from Valencia. He teaches, uh, I'll try to, I'll find his, uh, hopefully he still has his website up, his server up, with his uh, Duke classes that he taught a few years back. Uh, but he teaches this shot, but it's designed to go basically, you know, here's your shield edge. You now imagine the shield edge there. That your sword gets by it, and then your tip falls in behind. So you've got this, you get by the edge, and then the tip just, or this, and then your tip just gets behind. I'll hopefully this, this site's still up. If it's not up, I'll try to teach it the best I can in a later video. Uh, I don't really throw it. I'm not that good at it. I've tried. Uh, I can get it off and on, but he's much better at it. He built his career on it. Uh, it's a very effective shot for him, especially against where he came, where he's from, Atlantia, where it's still predominantly heater shifts, and you're more of a A-frame, pillbox, whatever. Those are rough terms. Uh, they're not exactly those styles, but. You still got you know, the, 
is still like this, almost in a boxer stance, which if you watch my new, my latest pro work, you'll see that's basically how I fight scrap. It's basically, it's just like I'm, it's just like if I was boxing. Boom. That's my stance. Uh, but if he doesn't, if I can't find his server anymore, I'll try to teach that later on. So you've got the flat snap. You've got the offside, which is the other side of the helmet. Same concept. You don't want to do this. It's wherever the edge of the shield is, you want him to have to raise it or duck underneath. But you want to make him move. If you're making him move, you're making him react to you, not the other way around. Uh, unless he's tiny. <laughs> which there are plenty of guys that do that. It's like, okay, you think you're going to throw this or this. Okay, here he goes. Duck. And he already knows where he's going for the next shot. Uh, so, yeah. Then you get your leg snap. Just a basic boom. And for that one inch above the, above the knee. I don't throw this that much, to be totally honest. Uh, for honestly, one of my simplest reasons is this shot has a very heavy tendency that when it gets, when it gets blocked, it goes into the person's knee. So I'm very, to this day, I'm still slightly heavy on that shot. Now, if they're one of those guys that you know, hold their shield way up like this, or I notice that they're holding their shield, especially if I pick them a few times high, and they're edging their shield up higher and higher and higher, I might throw that because it's faster than the wrap. But the problem, but the thing is my wrap shot is designed for those guys that put their shield off their leg. So, which I've got a the hidden hand wrap. I've got a video on that. Uh, that's what that shot's designed for. It's really, if they're like, if they're like this, I can most likely hit them. Uh, maybe not hard enough, because I, do, I have a tendency to, uh, I'm having issues with the shot rate uh, on, on certain people. So I need to figure out the mechanics of what I'm doing wrong. Uh, I think I know what I'm doing wrong. I think I'm correcting it because I'm having more guys take the shot. Uh, but I know that for a while, I was basically, you know, don't worry about it. Not part of this class. <laughs> so, on the pedal. You're going, shot design. You go basically right at the temple, or like right over the ear. Uh, if you've got one of those guys that like to duck, then aim a little lower to try to still nail them. Though, on those guys, you really probably want to go more into a wrap. But we'll get into that would be a second class. So, but with this shot, you can change it just by how you uh, position your body. So, right here, I'm doing more of this. If I want to go more here, I'll probably do that. I'll take that little step closer and just pound it right in their head. Um, if I might go a little lower, especially if I notice that they're doing like this or something like that, then I'll play the I'll play the ego game of I wonder if I can hit that spot. So it's like okay, I've got an inch and a half area, maybe two inches, okay, let's see if I can, no. <laughs> so you know, right below the ear, because they're, they're usually protecting here, their shield's about right there, so you gotta bow the swords with maybe a little more to try to get in. Uh, it's better with that shot. Okay, so offside, same target zone. This around the temple, or down the chin, one of the two areas. Uh, temple, I like temple more for the simple fact of it's closer to the head. Um, chins, especially if they don't have a closed face, chin shots can feel wonky and because it's not getting to them, it just might do this to their helm, you might have a tendency to, of them not taking it. Um, so I don't tend to throw that shot that much. It's more that. 
And then the leg shot is just the basic, you can see the black marks, see if I can even hit it, since it's not one of my normal shots. So, boom. Yeah, see, I'm above. But that's, I'm very wary of hitting guys low. A lot of it has to do with, when I first came up, like the first three weeks or whatever, I was hitting guys low. I went over that in my hidden paint wrap video. Because a lot of that was, you know, they, they showed me that one, and they went directly into showing me how to throw a wrap shot, which, you know, is this. And that's exactly how it was taught, was that. Which is why we came up with this. This isn't going to hit people low. If it does, it's going to be light. But it's bouncing off something and then coming back down, but all the force is gone. All right, so, back to basics. Most of your combos, not saying all, but most of your combos, are going to come off of one of those three shots. Uh, I teach, and really, and this is the basic thing, try not to TikTok. I mean, TikToks, I mean, you know, going here, 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 is fine. But your opponent's going to start going boom, boom, boom. The object of the game is to get your opponent into a habit, and you change the habit. So I'll tend to do that. Basically, the double tap. Uh, it's one of the things I stress with, with my students, is, or the guys I teach, or whatever. Um, this double tap is a wonderful thing. Because <laughs> you get guys, you throw that first shot, they automatically start blocking for over here, somewhere along that line, and then you're coming right here. Uh, I definitely like doing the double tap different zones. So you, know, you got A, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, so, A, Because it's, it's more of a AA, you know, they might get that block, you know, they get the block, they start coming back, oh, okay, their block is still kind of there, so you're wanting to change that zone, but you're also trying to take, you're trying to get, you're trying to get to the spot that's with making. So AF, it's a longer trip for them to get to, so you got more time. So you know, you throw that, boom, take that step, boom. They can go here, always going there. They're going for that leg, you know, for the, just the leg snap. And but you're going past, or you're going underneath. And that's why I throw that shot. Because it just makes it very hard. And a lot of times they might overblock it and go way past the point, so the point's here. So you still hit them here because the point went past. Uh, but work on those. Work on your basics. That's your ground level. Make that strong. Everything else after that, you can play off of. Um, probably the next class I do, uh, next week, is gonna be basic strap sword and shield. So, so we'll go over that next week. I wanna separate the two because I think it's kind of important. Uh, I'm probably going to do a center grip class of how I've taught myself, but as those who kind of know me, no, center grip is not my natural form. I basically, yeah, I've been fighting it off and on for the past maybe 10 years, but it's been very off and on. I've never got a full season, actually, no, actually, I've never got a full season fighting center grip. I've always ended up going back to strap shield at some point during that year. Um, it's just, it's, it's my comfort zone. I'm okay with center grip. I've done well in turning to center grip. Um, but what I'm finding out is, and the reason why I'm going away from center grip is, I'm just finding my left, my left arm doesn't do well. It, it does well like short little fighter practices like bear pits, stuff like that, I'm fine with it. For like two days, 
or like a really heavy, intense, you know, like fight 100 fights type thing that they would center grip. This muscle in my neck and my shoulder blade starts giving me issues. So it's like, you know what, I've tried it. I've tried it three times this year. Every time this year, after some heavy fighting for a week, I start having neck issues. And it's like, I'm done, I'm, I'm done tired of being able to do this with my head, got my neck hurts. But thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you guys next week with, uh, actually this Saturday, I've got a fight practice for one of the guys coming down from up north for uh, his squire to Duke Malcolm. We're doing a little family fighter practice. I'll be videotaping it. But hopefully uh, I'll have Duke Malcolm, Cal Andrew, Sir Alonzio, uh, Derek Balthazar's son James, Arden, and we're going to have Noah, but unfortunately Noah kind of, he's got a mild concussion. So, which sucks totally, because I know he was really looking forward to fight this weekend. But hey, it happens. So hopefully wish him Godspeed, you know, really worth me saying Godspeed. But uh, get back on, you know, get back healthy, get back out here with us. And you become a part of our family. All right. Thank you very much, guys, and have a good night.